Hey, I'm Lucas, and here's how you can use 2080 for getting things done. I've reviewed a lot of apps for GCD in the past, but decided it was time to build my own because none of them scratch that GCD itch as deeply as a lot of us need them to. I will preface this video by saying that 2080 is very much still in development, but what you're seeing is a first version ready for public use, with many improvements still to come. For this video, Let's pretend to be Guillermo the Gardener. For capturing thoughts, ideas, or anything else that enters your mind, you can dump these into the already existing inbox. The inbox is the default list for new items to end up in. So if you use the quick add bar at the top, you can rest assured that it will be there for later processing. If you're a first time user, go ahead and pause the video to perform a mind dump in there. Nothing's off the table. Now let's look at clarifying our input. In this example, we have five items. Let's go through them in order and discover the powerful ways in which 2080 helps us make sense of things. Picking up a new rake is an errand. Let's first create a list to park it into. Lists in 2080 are used to distinguish the general topic that a task belongs to. This can range from a small project all the way up to a general life focus area. Let's call this list inventory management. To visually distinguish the list, you can give it a custom image or emoji as well as a color. Let's use the toolbox emoji for this one and color it blue. Now that we've created the list, let's edit the pick up new rake item. First, let's move it out of the inbox and into the list we just created. Notice how the task window has a new blue border which is a helpful visual indicator of list membership that I'm sure you'll learn to appreciate over time as your most important lists get linked to a color in your memory. The new rake can only be picked up until the end of the week. So let's set up a due date for this upcoming Sunday. Everything else looks good. So we can save it by pressing update task. Let's move on to the next item, get seeds. This sounds like a project. Let's create a separate list for it. The three seeds Guillermo needs to get to complete this project are strawberry seeds, olive tree seeds, and avocado seeds. Let's create tasks for each one of them while we are inside of the list. Let's inspect these tasks to ensure everything is in order. Let's add a note to the strawberry seeds task. Make sure they're red. These task descriptions can help you get things done more quickly as they support extensive formatting including links, headings, and more. Now, if we go back to the list view and expand the task, we'll see the description as well. Guillermo knows avocado seeds will only become available next month. So let's add a start date to this task. Everything else looks in order here. So let's move on to the next item, pruning saw delivery. This is something we're waiting for, meaning someone else needs to perform an action for us. In 2080, Guillermo can set this up by modifying the tasks assignee. The default and only initial assignee is called me, as most tasks in your system will likely be for yourself. But from within the task creation or editing menu, we can create a new one. Let's assume this is a delivery coming from Amazon. We can name it Amazon and upload a picture like the Amazon logo to indicate it visually. Let's leave the assignee category as is for now. We can change it later. After switching to Amazon as the assignee, we can see that the status changes to waiting for automatically. Let's park it in the inventory management list and move on to the next item, which is prepare for garden renovation for client. This sounds like a project. Let's create a separate list for it. The three tasks Guillermo needs to complete for this project are measure dimensions, assess tools needed, and move needed tools into truck. Contrary to the Get Seeds project, these tasks follow one another. In other words, it's a sequential project. Let's set up a chain. We can do this either during task creation, or we can create the tasks first and chain them after. Let's go with the second approach for now and chain them after we created the tasks. To do so, Guillermo can use 2080's bi-directional blocker functionality. 
Since it's bidirectional and we have a chain of three tasks, the most efficient way is to go to the middle task and set up the blocker as well as the dependency from there. Edit the task, then in the bottom left, select the blocker, which needs to be completed before this task becomes available. And in the bottom right, under is a blocker for, select the task that becomes available after completing this one. Subscribe to Lucas is the final item in Guillermo's inbox, which is something he can park under a single action items list. Since you're on YouTube right now, subscribing will take you just a few seconds. So instead of adding it to a list, go ahead and subscribe now if you haven't yet. Now that we've processed some input, let's see where it all ended up and study how we can use the left filter sidebar in 2080. In the top left, all lists can be seen and edited by pressing the gear symbol. They are automatically sorted alphabetically, and as of recording, no further sorting exists, but we will update this in the future. A workaround for this is to rename your lists and number them, which will automatically affect sorting. The Allow Multi-Selection toggle enables you to view multiple lists' content at once, or just one. This toggle exists for other filters as well, like statuses. Statuses can't be edited and are automatically set based on a task's parameters. If you paid attention in the previous section, you probably saw it happening already. Status indicates the actionability of a task and its logic is set hierarchically. Let's look at the logic from bottom to top. First off, a task can be marked permanently unavailable for three reasons. One, it's marked as complete, indicating it's already done. Two, it's marked as discarded, meaning you decided against doing it, but you do want to keep a paper trail of it. Or three, it's deleted, which means you didn't do it and don't consider it relevant enough to keep. While you can always manually undo one of these status changes, while they are active, they won't result in any of the others, no matter how you edit a task. For tasks that aren't one of these, the first thing that is being looked at is if the task has an incomplete blocker. If that blocker isn't marked as complete, discarded, or deleted, the task remains blocked, even if things like its start date are no longer set in the future, as time isn't the only thing preventing it from making it available. For tasks that aren't blocked, the assignee is then checked. If it's anyone other than yourself, it's marked as waiting for. It's up to you to mark it complete once the entity responsible for completing the task has done it. These assignees aren't actual other 2080 users, but more like records in an address book that you maintain. If there's no open blocker and you're the one assigned, but the start date is set in the future, meaning time still has to pass before it becomes available, the task is automatically set to scheduled. Start date, as well as due date, which is the date a task is aimed to be completed, can be filtered for in the left-hand menu as well. Only if none of the above apply, i.e. a task that is assigned to you has no or fully resolved blockers and or time constraints, is a task considered available or a true next action in GTD terms. You can start doing it now. Dates can be filtered for by both start and due date, allowing you to get granular. Filtering by due date can be helpful to assess current and upcoming deadlines. Filtering by start date can help you assess upcoming workloads that become available in the future. Of course, a combination is possible as well. Tags in 2080 have multiple use cases, but the primary one we recommend is to assign context to a task. A context in GTD can be a place you need to be at, a person you need to be with, or a tool you need to have in order to perform a task. These are just example categories though. 2080 allows Guillermo to organize his contexts in a way that works for him by using tag groups and grouping individual contexts under each. They are supply store, his colleague Flora the florist, and phone. Priorities can be assigned to a task and filtered for. 2080 has four levels, 
allowing you to use prioritization frameworks like the Eisenhower matrix, though you can keep it as simple as you like. That's what Guillermo is doing, with the must-dos marked in red automatically thanks to setting them as level 1. Filtering for assignee is a powerful accountability helper, as it provides a quick overview of what's been committed to you and who committed to it, helping you with following up and reminding them that you're someone who wants to see commitments met. As you can imagine, using these filters on the left-hand sidebar makes reviewing your work easy. For example, to assess what you've done, all you have to do is click on Completed under Status. To assess what projects may need attention, just go to their respective lists and make sure Available is selected. If no match is present, that project has no way to move forward right now. After seeing all this, you may feel a little overwhelmed. Are you really supposed to go through these filters every time just to find whatever you can actually do right now? No. Discovering what you can do right now without any blockers like time or other tasks requiring completion, all you have to do is click this button. As you can see, clicking it does two things. Number one, it filters out anything you don't need to see to know what you can do right now. And number two, it displays only tasks that are available, ensuring they are next actions. And you can filter down for context with the tag menu. Now let's watch it in action. You may remember Guillermo's sequential project, prepare garden renovation for clients. Watch what happens when we complete the first next action. It removes that task from view and instantly replaces it with its dependency, which is now available. This is how investing some time in chaining your tasks pays off when in focus mode, which is the name of this 2080 view in contrast with the planning mode you've seen so far. Our goal with 2080 is to align with your natural workflow. Most productivity apps out there are really good at planning, but forget that sometimes you just need to know what you can do right now. With extensive filters required, this creates clutter, wastes time and causes overwhelm. 2080's one-click focus mode that you can switch between back and forth aims to alleviate all of this. And we're excited for you to check it out as well. Give 2080 a try today by going to 2080.app. Create an account and use the free trial to give 2080 a test drive without cost. I'm excited to hear your feedback and I look forward to creating the future of personal productivity. One of this call focused and requires you to actually use the app as little as possible.